Hello there and welcome back my friends. I hope you're all keeping well. In this video we are going to be adding quite a bit of macro algae to my five foot aquarium. You may remember in a previous video I set this up and I had a little bit of a diatom bloom but it's been about four or five weeks now and the diatoms have died down so it's now time to put some macro algae in this aquarium. All right, so you might remember in my last couple of videos, this tank was a fresh setup and it did go through a rather brief, but actually quite bad diatom bloom. It lasted around uh, two to three weeks. I did a video of this tank actually in that diatom bloom and it was pretty brutal, but it just disappeared pretty much over a couple of days. Everything settled down, the bacteria and the ecosystem kind of matured and now we're in this position where everything's looking pretty good. There is a slight flow issue, I need to add a power head. You can see there's some dirt settling on top of the rocks, so that definitely means that there's not enough flow in the tank, so I'll add a power head to that at some point. But today we're gonna to be adding macro algae. So I have started a little bit, I've added a few test pieces in there. I've got a little bit of Calerpa, um, and then there's a few bits of other red and brown macro algae that I've added you can see but today is the real plant so the idea is this rock structure here I want it to be completely covered in red algae um, obviously it's going to take time to do that but I'm going to seed it so that this entire area just gets covered in red macro algae it's going to look pretty cool I'm going to try not to do too many different species in this tank because sometimes if you add too much uh, variation it can look a little bit messy and things can get a little bit lost in there so the idea is to have mainly calerpas um, down this end and obviously they will spread a little bit but hopefully i can control them so they don't go up onto the rock work um, on the pebbly area we're going to have larger leafed macroalgae uh, and some darker colored macroalgae such as the one at the back and then on this rock here, we're going to have a bit of texture, so mainly Gracilaria, different types of Gracilaria, uh, which is the red macroalgae. You can see a little bit there already. Um, and then there's this one here, which I kind of, yeah, no one has this as far as I know. It's called um, Lorenziana. And I'm going to try, I've got a bit in my other tanks, and I'm going to put it in here just because it seems to be one of these ones that sort of melts and then comes back. And I haven't managed to um, grow it in a way that it doesn't sort of melt away after a couple of months. So I'm going to put it in there and just see if I can keep that growing in a, in a successful way. I've also got some of this, um, I think it's a coralline algae, but I've got it in an Evo at work. And it's a, a really red um, algae. So I'm assuming it's a type of coralline, but it feels a lot spongier than coralline. So I'm not really sure what it is but it does encrust, so I've put two shells of that in here and that will allow me to hopefully have that spread over the pebbles. I mean, it's gonna take months and months, but um, eventually we will get there. So for the main bit of rock work, the big bit on the left, what I'm gonna do is break lots of little sprigs of this red macroalgae. This is um, Gracilaria mammillaris. And I'm, it's quite a fast grower um, and it does sort of spread out quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few bits of this I've got and break it up into small pieces and just wedge that in around the rock work. The brown stuff that's in the main pebble area is this one here. Um, I haven't really got a proper ID on this one, but that's what it looks like when it's larger. So it's a lovely sort of dense brown looking bush, but it is a red algae. I'm also going to put a bit of Boccio Cladia in there because it just has this awesome colour and shape to it. Um, I really like Boccio Cladia. I've got a lot of Boccio Cladia in this other tank down here. It's growing really, really well. And I've got a spare rock uh, behind this bit here with it growing out. So I'm going to add some of that. And then in terms of the green macro, I'm going to be putting in there this stuff, which is Calerpa prolifera, um, just because it grows really well and I've never had any issues with it and it doesn't become invasive. It's so easy to remove if you're bored of it. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing with that. There is a little bit of taxifolia in there as well, but um, I'll show you the taxifolia in fact. I'm struggling with taxifolia, so it's the sort of fern 
shaped one so obviously there's a bit of prolifera in there but the bit in the middle there with the fern leaves that's taxifolia and every time I put taxifolia anywhere it just melts on me um, and just melts on me and it just dies so that's pretty much my last bit so hopefully this will survive but you can already see on one end it's starting to go a bit white so I'm really struggling with that one so but, but we'll see what happens I guess another red algae that I'm going to be putting in there is this one right at the back there it uh, is another type of Gracilaria I think it's Gracilaria curtis eh? so very similar to the other one the Mammillaris but this one tends to be a bit lighter doesn't have as big broad um, sort of leaves not, not really leaves but it's not as broad as the uh, Mammillaris so I'm going to try and distance them because I really don't want them to sort of outcompete each other but that will be going in around the edges so that will be around the edges so there's a bit there already and then I have the Mammillaris on the top and hopefully they will sort of complement each other there's another ring another one here that I've got which is um, I don't really know what it is it's just a bit of rock that I found in one of our just sort of miscellaneous tanks and it's got a bit of red algae growing out of it I don't know what that is um, I'm just put it in here because it looks cool and I want to see what happens with it uh, and then finally I'm going to be putting a little bit of solaria which is this stuff dotting around this is a, a macroalgae which is a really slow grower I've got a lot of bases I call them of solaria but it takes forever for them to actually become anything so I'll put a few little bits in amongst the rock but uh, it'll probably take a, a good year or so before they do anything So that's the bulk of the macroalgae in there now. Um, obviously there's a lot of growing to do. They don't start off uh, fully planted. So you've got to use your imagination here a little bit, but that's quite a lot of calerpa. That's gonna spread out and become really nice and dense. Uh, probably move its way up the bed here. Got a lot more of this sort of bushy chondria um, stuff there. So that's gonna create a nice big bush there. And in the middle we've got two Boccia cladias. You can see this one here is a self-seeded Boccia cladia. I didn't buy this or plant this. This seeded itself from another plant via spores. So that's a nice healthy piece. It's also got other types of macro on there, various types of Gracilaria and stuff. So that will also spread out into that area. And then at the back there, I've got a larger piece of Boccia cladia. That for some reason has lost all, well, most of its little balls but it's growing them back and you can see growth on the end. So that will actually um, hopefully regrow all of its little balls on there and become a nice healthy Botrocladia plant. And then down the bottom, we've got Soliaria and then we have all the rest of the Gracilarias. Um, as you can see, I've put a lot pretty much everywhere, quite equally spaced out. And you can kind of see the difference between the two now. Um, this is the Gracilaria curtise, I think and at the top there we've got Mammillaris so slightly different shapes but similar colours so that just needs to be given time to grow out it's going to take a month or so this piece that's been in there a bit longer you can see it's already starting to sort of bush out and grow larger um, fronds so eventually this whole rock top will be covered in this Gracilaria look really really cool I'll just give you a, a look down the top of the tank so if you're wondering what light I'm using, I'm using uh, an Interpet Tri-Spec 2. Works really well, grows macroalgae's very well. Um, it's what I've got on two of my tanks over there. So that's the, this is the third one with the Interpet on. And then my other tanks have got fluvals on them. Um, I find that the fluval plant works better than the fluval marine for macroalgae. So that's why I'm going over to completely plant spectrum for my macroalgae's. 
So in terms of fish, at the moment, all that's in there is a single uh, chromis. It's the blue reef chromis. They're quite a rare, well, relatively rare species of chromis. He's decided to hide now, so that's the end of me showing you him. But I will be adding more fish into it. So I'm going to be adding a tang in there. I'm going to be adding, I think I put, probably put in a couple of clowns, but clarky clowns because I don't like commons. Um, and one thing I have realised is you can't really put blennies in with macroalgae because what they do is they eat it, especially botrycladia. I've got a blenny in another tank. It strips all the balls off of it, so no blennies in this tank, unfortunately. So thank you for watching. I hope this video has been entertaining. Um, I will be doing more videos on this tank. Obviously, this is just the first plant and we'll see it progress over the next year and couple of years. Um, let me know if there's anything you want me to add to this tank. I was thinking about adding a mangrove because I've got one in another lagoon tank I've done and it works really well. So leave a comment below if you want to add anything or tell me what I should be adding to this tank. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you're not a subscriber already and like the video because it really helps me get seen on YouTube. So once again, thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.